is a designer and is someone that is actually into the thing. He's created this team that normally is upside down. I will show you the official one later in the PowerPoint presentation. It's actually say that there are two ways of creating and of making systems. Uh, sustainability is in the middle. We go either to down, is opposite at the moment, <laughs> degradation, erosion, pollution, or to regeneration. Sustainability is more or less in the middle. Uh, green attitude is somewhere over there. That uh, we talk about green attitude. Uh, restoration is somewhere over here. Restoration. Restoration, yes. Conservation is somewhere over here, mm -hmm. let's say. So, um, so we want, potentially, to go from an erosion system, degradation system, to a regenerative system. A regenerative system actually is functioning by himself, by themselves, forever, <laughs> let's say. A forest is a fantastic example of this. No one put fertilizer, and no one is going to water the forest. No one is going to, let's say, cut the grass of the forest. Like everything is functioning by itself forever and on and on and on, like forever. For a very long period of time. So, what I wanted to ask you <laughs> uh, for, um, for the forest thing is if you can imagine another system that could function like this. Without any maintenance, any completely natural by itself. system. Lakes, pastures. Uh, like? Like, like uh, you ask, is there any except the forest? If you can think ecosystem. something, ecosystem. Like another Mapa. ecosystem that can fo like function regeneratively, seems correct, Nefimo? Sea, sea, yeah. or lakes, uh, I mean rivers, if we don't touch them. Mm -hmm. Our own cells. Yeah, our own cells. bodies. Our bodies. Human and non human. Mm. 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 Nice, eh? Um, yes. I'm not sure we are so much regenerated. <laughs> At least in a level of evolution that we reach at the moment. <laughs> I, actually, actually, uh, uh, one. It's sustain yourself. Yeah. It's okay. It's good to go back to what is sustaining and regenerating. If you make a wound and then you heal yourself, mm -hmm. it's you sustain what it was before. But for example, if you put uh, like. Um, be wax uh, balm, uh, then you can have like a baby skin that you had many years ago. So <laughs> let, let's say, <laughs> and and like a very 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 important thing that that regenerative system have is diversity in organisms, organization, structure, colors, uh, attitudes, um, like types of life that exist inside there. Forest, sea, coral reef, uh, we can say lake, uh, not polluted lake, uh, <laughs> um, whatever, I mean, there are. In nature, the ecosystems are working, uh, are finding themselves a way to exist. So, <laughs> in, uh, if you feel bored, they like to interact with you. So, like in Australia, after like all this colonization uh, and after all this oppression of people, uh, Bill Morrison, uh, in the 80s, maybe a little bit guy, a little bit, uh, he wanted to find a way of how to make regenerating systems. And Holmgren. And Holmgren, his, his, his student. So, actually, the beginning was to, to manage their landscapes. So they were taking the, like, say, okay, these indigenous people do something nice, but don't take some knowledge from them. And maybe, okay, we have some nice things also to share. So why not combine all this knowledge that we have in Australia? 
and then created the idea of permaculture. It at the beginning stands from permanent agriculture that was about um, managing agricultural landscapes. But then at the end it was more about permanent culture. Like it, the, the idea itself evoluting. So like there are some very, very funny <laughs> definitions about permaculture means. We can see them later in the PowerPoint. That, but I wanted at the beginning to say that we have in our minds that permaculture is the world. Let's transform a little bit and say, is permaculture design what we talk about? It's like a design of a, a, a science, a design science, permaculture. It's not gardening, it's not like theory. It's a way to create things. So like the way to create things is based of, on the ethics. The ethics are more or less very similar to the, first, the, the ones that we talk on the first day. So called in permaculture, they call in three separate ways. Christos made this fantastic, peaceful. <laughs> so it's earth care, standing for ecology and sustainability, uh, people care, and fair share. Like, can, can you say some things over it? Let's say earth care, let's start first. What could be earth care? What could be earth care? What is earth care for you? Huh. The most important, what is for you, not for us? Yeah, yeah. What is for you? Andrea? Andrei? It's uh, regeneration of uh -huh. degraded soils and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. with an ecosystem restoration. Mm -hmm. yeah. Earth care could also mean... Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, no. uh, earth care could also mean like respecting the Earth's rhythms and... Uh, oh, and very good one. Rewilding. Mm -hmm. Rewilding. Mm -hmm. yeah. Conservation of species. Maintaining mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. What? Like maintaining biodiversity. Maintaining biodiversity. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, also pushing biodiversity, pushing the diversity of ecosystems. Mm -hmm. You mean increasing it? In yeah, increasing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Someone else? Any other ideas? Some people have heard of Gaia theory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. How many people have heard of Gaia theory? Okay. It's, it's, it's very much based also on the, on the core belief that the, um, Earth is a living organism. Gaia theory, let's uh, summing it up. It's a living organism and we respect it as a living organism. So Earth care is also taking care of another living organism that actually we are dependent on and we cannot live without it. So, yeah. Earth care is much based also on that. On that? Gaia is G A Y A. 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 Sorry. It comes from Greek. Yeah. We call Earth G. Yeah, is in ancient Greek Gaia. So. Gaia. Yeah. Yeah. What does it come from? Yeah. 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 Greek yeah. is Earth. Ah, yeah. oh, okay. We're saying uh, here for Earth. Mm -hmm. So, you think it's closed? It's filled? Oh, we can leave it open just if someone has a spontaneous idea. Yeah. To pop up. Then let's go people here. People here, <laughs> not people here. <laughs> <laughs> Any ideas of what this might mean? Or might. Like, refresh to? Ending? Hunger. Ending? Hunger. Of course. Social justice. Mm -hmm. So, what are the basic needs for housing and clothing? It, it will, hunger and social justice, for me, it would go more to fair share, uh -huh. okay. which concerns more fair share of resources. Okay. Mm -hmm. Think what these people care for you. For me, it's better. No, is it good? And it's good. Um, no, 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 let's respect the round. Oh, yeah. I just... Okay, David? An um, understanding of the culture and of the, of the mm -hmm. people you are. People? 
just being respectful and don't mind to other people in general. Mm -hmm. Annie? Community support? Sorry? Community support? Also, like uh, caring about the reproductive part of society. Like, yeah. I would put more than the first year. Hmm? Reproductive. reproductive, what does it mean? Reproductive is like everything that uh, makes the human life um, uh, like a uh, reproduce, like a uh, sustain, like uh, care work, for example. Metabolism. Metabolism. Yeah. Human life. Ah, okay, okay. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Like healthier life. Healthier life. Healthier life. Very, very important. Very, very important. Sarah? Yeah, it's the same, like uh, caring about people's health. Yeah, exactly. Making sure, sorry, making yeah, yeah. sure everyone has enough. Or is that also mm -hmm. uh, Yeah, kind of. It, maybe it's sharing the two. Yeah. And very simple things also. What do people need Food. in order to be cared? Food. Home, healthcare, home, healthcare. home. home. Yeah. Yeah. friends, friends, yeah. communication, yeah. 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 to be warm, to be warm, warm. <laughs> to be warm, to be warm. <laughs> a good house, not just house. <laughs> <laughs> we we'll have two more sticky bags. <laughs> <laughs> it was an advertisement. To <laughs> uh, yes, to be warm. To be loved also, eh? Mm -hmm. To forget. Mm -hmm. To be part of a community. Mm -hmm. To be to be with others. Mm -hmm. Le to not have violence in their bodies or in their the minds or like mm -hmm. in their feelings. So any other ideas, Andre? I have a question. Yes? Uh, how is like uh, conflict incorporated mm -hmm. in the in the people care, uh, there are various techniques. Uh, one of them could be consensual decision making, and the other that is can be called uh, non-violent communication for Marshall Rosenberg. Uh, there is also sociocracy and um, <coughs> group facilitation group that we talked about yesterday. Like, th there are there are methods. So transformative justice, like. Justice, harm reduction, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That could be in people care. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. In in generally in communities, we see like like this is a like a, like they can be very much this, mm -hmm. and and here have like a total mess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so like le, le, yes, so let's give a little bit space on this too, because this one. We have it. <laughs> we don't have it, but I mean, it's, it's important. There are tools, and depends on, on on the structure of, of the scheme of the community. There are different tools that we can use. No, no, it's uh, it's exactly that. Um, yeah, let's go to fair share to fair explore share. more uh, this, and it also has to do with conflicts as well, because conflicts arise why many times because power maybe is not equally distributed, or resources are not equally distributed. So if there is fair share in the designing of the system, either social or an ecological one, then you can uh, prevent conflicts. Not just stop, not stop them, because conflicts are a natural thing of humans and of uh, our systems, but just preventing them by their structure. Uh, so fair share, I think, plays an important role in conflicts. What is fair share for you? Not being greedy, taking just enough, just what you need, and sharing the rest with other people, like sharing. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Having the right to be heard. Having the right to be heard. Yeah. So your opinion matters. Uh, mine or each individual's. Yes. To be heard. Mm -hmm. To have a time to spoke to tell. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Just like fair share, it's like the economy dimension of permaculture, yeah? And I would like to, while we are thinking, uh, imagine not only fair sharing or between us, 
but fair sharing with also other aspects of life. How can we fair share like <coughs> with animals? How can we fair share with plants? How can this happen? Do you have any ideas of how can this be? Where we are at the moment taking from the system much more than what we are giving back. Mm -hmm. It's very clear in all parts of the system. Yes, Mara? Not exploiting uh, animals and uh, resources of nature. Resources, if you have Yes, Emma? species. I was going to say, but also, I think an equal exchange, like stop an equal exchange, which is a huge part of it, mm -hmm. and on how like, capitalism can still exist, and the way we eat and we produce can still exist because we extract so much and labor and resources. Uh, people? Uh, regenerative forests or something like. Yeah, mm -hmm. regenerative forests are somewhere like here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Daria? And also like uh, just not isolating uh, human from nature, just like reorienting uh, human from the center. Mm -hmm. so it's more yeah. decentralizing. Mm -hmm. And also creative <coughs> commons. Creative commons. Creative commons, yeah. creative commons, very important. Yeah. 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 Yes, of course. Okay. Uh, just to give some examples more to enrich the discussion, I have written food sovereignty. Have you heard of that? Mm. Mm. More from the um, What's called the Indian uh, Dana Shiva, who's working a lot on that and talking about food sovereignty and how about the seeds, how it's important to have uh, seed sovereignty, how it's important to cultivate our own food and can be able to cultivate our own food, have access to land, etc., etc. It's very interesting to go deeper to that, uh, Dana Shiva, and then about the alternative economy. So there is many types of solidarity economy, alternative economy, sharing economy, all types of economy different than just exchanging money with a product. And then also communities. I put the communities, mm, let's say also e communities, but communities in general, because many times communities, intentional communities, are trying by structure to have a fair structure about all their members and create another paradigm of how is to live in a fair share group, in a fair share social context. Mm. David? And the topic of fair share is, might not be the, like, it's a bigger question, I guess, but how is it like managed, I think is the best word, in the case of like, since we're talking about like an uh, equality of distribution pretty much, uh, it's also depending on, I think, like, what you actually have. So, like, for uh, if we're talking about, like, a kind of resource that's not present or at least more rare in some places, like, how's it handled? Like, if it's, I don't know, here, <laughs> we were talking about bananas, I don't know that's coming from far, but, like, uh, is it a question of, like, the, um, sharing it or just kind of prohibiting like from outside because it uh, creates problems because it's something we don't have or like that? Or? Yeah, for example, Europe is not sharing the diamonds, gold, whatever comes from Africa at all. Like, let's be conscious about it. This is not happening in the modern society. We don't have this culture, especially in colonialist countries that we might relate. Yeah, fair share refers to fair sharing among a group of people, fair sharing among nations, so the global south and the global north. It was also a concept when Bill Monson brought it in. Fair share between nature and, and, uh, and humans, so let the space be, but also be able to survive from, because we are dependent from nature for our food, etc. So we are also playing part in that. We need nature in order to survive. So fair share between these two, and many more. Gabriele, you wanted to say something? Yeah, like fair share is also like reparations, like historical disequalities that you try to equalize, right? Like because as Europeans, we just do a lot historically. So fair sharing means also equalizing historically what we took and 
uh, giving it back, you know. Regenerating, not requiring it. Not requiring it, I would say. Pia, you wanted to say something? Yes. I was thinking, how does gender roles play Oof. a part in the situation? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's included totally. And <laughs> actually, whatever you can imagine, it can be included. Even it will be like the share of who is washing the dishes today, even the power in the community, like. Uh, whatever like all the books write, it is this, it's like not something else. It can be totally included in the permaculture approach. Mm. So it's, it, it started as a design system about ecosystems, mm -hmm. but as it grew and grew and spread all over the world, it grew over social systems as well. It's what I was fascinated more about, that's why I entered permaculture. So, if you're talking about social systems design, then fair share in social systems designs, of course, would be include gender balance. Gender balance, gender equality, gender justice, gender regen regenerating the injustice that has been done so many years before. Any other ideas about fair sharing? Is, is something like a very environmental, uh, let's say, cheesy thing that everyone knows? What about sharing with animals also? Mm -hmm. Sharing the animals, the land, the nutrition. Mm. That's why in a, in a permaculture design you have a zone where it's always wild zone. You, you give the zone to wilderness. Mm -hmm. Something else, something else. Something very, very classic. <laughs> what fear share? Mm -hmm. In the first share, in the first share. <laughs> ne? Water. Yeah. Guys, with the next generation, ah, yes, yes. Oh. they're sharing with what is coming. Mm. Uh -huh. Next generation. Oh. Yes, and not only the next one, but the next one's coming. Right? Mm. Like, we always forget it. Like, our minds are like this, but we have to first share for the people that are going to be born today or tomorrow in 20 years. Mm. Like, all also, with children that are living in the present moment. I can, I can talk about this a lot. And also with the sustainable cities, maybe we have time in the afternoon. But like, first share with the other human beings that are not here at, at the moment, but they will come, eventually. <laughs> so yes, don't forget, intergenerational. Like, there are some tribes, indigenous, that they were planning their existence for seven generations. Aboriginal. Aboriginal. Right. They so were making decisions based on seven generations. Generations. So, yeah, so it's like instead of ownership, it's like stewardship. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Stewardship. Stewardship. stewardship language. For, uh, you don't own the land, you just borrow it from your children. Right? This is the classic cheesy oh, thing that uh, yeah. everyone knows. Uh, come on. <laughs> like, I don't want to say, of course, everyone knows. Um, something else on this? Uh, so, uh, Bill Morrison and David Holmgren, um, they were actually uh, observing and studying and teaching about nature and natural ecosystems. So they, they, they saw some problems in the way Agriculture was managed. That's what it, that's where it all started. So they wanted to propose a different agricultural system, as we said, permanent agriculture. So, um, so they tried to, to to see what what's what's wrong and what what is the mentality that can be changed. So they saw, for example, that tilling the soil in the long run is an erosion pattern. You don't get more than you think you get. You get less in the future. If, you sp if you're spraying fertilizers and chemicals, you think you get more, you think you get more, but actually in the long run, you take less. You take less. Let alone nature. You, as a producer, as in agriculture, you take less. So they try to think, what is the way that we mimic nature, because nature is regenerating by itself. 
It doesn't, you don't have to design it. It's already there. It's the most clever system that exists and will exist. So that's what that's what they think, and I think as well. And uh, so they try to mimic nature in order to have systems, human-made, that try to be regenerative. Try to. Okay. So they brought up some concepts. For example, that one thing should have multiple functions. If you plant the tree, think about the tree, how it can have stacking functions, how it can have many functions, not just I want to eat from the tree, I want shade, I want maybe wood, in the, I want bees to come, I want animal, birds to come, I want all of these functions, just one thing. Because that's what nature does. Nature doesn't have grass just for being grass. You know, it's many things why grass is there. And another thing is small scale intensive systems. So humans have a lot of power to make systems and make them very intensive. We don't need actually loads of space. In small space, we can create amazing systems. I mean, if we see a bit of the documentary, you will see what you can do in just your backyard. And then the other one is to just replicate natural patterns. If you see that something is going on in your area, and this is a natural pattern, don't go against it. Just go with it. Don't think that your mind knows better than what is happening already there. Just try to go with it and add more things in that. Just general I, men, mm, mm, mentality of permaculture that is, you can apply also to your life, maybe. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, is a pattern that we talk three days now, someone remembers? We can see it for the moment. This time, when you see me, you show it for the pattern. <laughs> come on, come on, it's so easy. Ah, the circle. The, the circle, the circle. Come on, like circular economy. The circle of gold. The circle of nutrition. Like, in generally, like, if you do the circle like this, and you see it from this way, it's like infinity. So, the circle is a pattern that keeps on going in nature in various functions. In, like, it, now, like, we start doing our, our life a little bit linear. Like, they want to go now out of the sphere of Earth and go out, waste, out. No, come on. We are in the same universe, anyways. So, the circular pattern in economy, in ecology, in other sense, is kind of working. It's a pattern that nature is using. Maybe not like a perfect sphere, but something like because it's going on and on and on and on and on. There are 12, so like now we suggest to make 12 little teams. So each team will take a card, very beautifully made from an artist, a friend of Christos, and um, you will read what is on, and maybe present a little bit, and what else? You discuss among you, if you're three people, maybe, uh, what does it mean for you, and then what, how you can use it uh, in your life. How would you apply it in your life? Okay. Small discussion, doesn't have to be an essay. Just <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.